Hi, I'm Josh Emery. I am a psychotherapist in the Fort Collins area. Uh, I've done a lot of contract work with Larimer County over the years, uh, most recently doing resilience alliance groups with Department of Human Services. And through those connections and relationships, I've been asked by some managers to put together a short video to address some of the stressors and conflicts and barriers that we tend to be facing right now, given the COVID-19 lockdown um, and disruption to our lives. So put together a series of topics, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, we all are most likely facing to some extent, and then giving some suggestions on how we interact with those and how we respond to those. So uh, I'm going to start with just acknowledging that there's a really good chance you're feeling unsettled right now. Uh, you drive across town or you stay in your home when you read the news, everything is different. And, and acknowledging that feeling unsettled is understandable in some ways appropriate. Now, we don't want to feel unsettled, so we're going to talk about ways to ground and connect. But you don't want to judge yourself for feeling something that seems appropriate given the dr dramatic shift and change in, uh, in our world right now. Our routines are blown up. We have decision fatigue. Our coping skills in some ways aren't available. Uh, we're at home. We're with people a lot at home, perhaps. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, and the exposure to dire news and uh, trends and trajectories, like that's just a constant influx and it's very unsettling. So uh, suggestions on uh, how to address that, how to be more grounded and create a sense of settledness uh, in these uncertain times. Acknowledging what you feel is the first point. Um, out loud saying, I'm feeling unsettled, which I know doesn't solve the problem, but having feelings and thoughts stay inside is typically not the answer. So to be able to say to someone or to yourself, this is unsettling, this creates uneasiness in me, uh, I want to release that. And, that. and saying and acknowledging is a form of releasing it. It doesn't fix all of a sudden the world's problems, but it doesn't keep it tight and combusting inside of us. Um, it is a form of release. Uh, another strategy for creating some uh, groundedness during this time is to create a schedule. Uh, it's easy to get lost in this sea of time if we're at home and Mondays are the same as Saturdays or, or we can't differentiate between 9 o'clock in the morning and 9 o'clock at night because everything's off. Creating a schedule gives our minds something to follow. It typically likes some guardrails. We typically like to be able to say at the end of the day, I accomplished this, I did this which typically fits within a structure of a day. So it's a great opportunity to make a schedule for yourself. Wake up, meditate, drink coffee, go for a walk, start work, take a lunch, take a nap maybe, work a little bit longer. Work, in, work your, your schedule into a way that uh, accomplishes your goals, your tasks, your responsibilities, but also matches the season. Uh, another suggestion I have during this time is name the season. Uh, this is a season of slower pace of life and health. Uh, that's not saying there aren't tragedies and there aren't uncertainties. Of course there are. But having a name for a season is kind of a, a, a reframe opportunity that gives us direction. So coming up with a creative, accurate, and positive name for the season is a really good social skill for us to be able to, like, oh, it's right. It's slower. It's about being slower and about being healthy right now. And aligning the things in your life to match that season and that name is important. Another way to start to create uh, this feeling of settledness is uh, meditating. So if you've never meditated before, uh, try not to be overwhelmed. It's not, uh, it's not hard. It just takes a lot of practice. It doesn't have to be a spiritual thing. It can be. It is for some. But for a lot of people, it's just a practice of getting in touch with their thoughts and their emotions and learning how to create some calm despite the noise around us. So if you are not familiar with meditation or mindfulness, uh, you're in for a treat because once you learn how to be aware of your thoughts and your emotions and you have a practice that identifies those, you gain control. When you gain control, uh, not of the world, but of ourselves, uh, we can have some peace and calm. So meditation is a practice uh, has incredible physical and mental health benefits, um, and it's something that we can do all the time uh, with an app or just with our own practice, whether that's four square breathing and you count to four as you breathe in, you hold for four, you breathe out for four, you hold for four and repeat. Doing that for two minutes 
Uh, lots of different exercises that just get us in touch with our bodies versus staying here and cycling through everything, which typically creates uh, anxiety and feelings of uh, chaos. Uh, another way in which we can cope and create some structure and some uh, feelings of being settled is noise canceling headphones. If you live in an environment where anyone else is there, right now there's a good chance you're overwhelmed, you're feeling irritated, you're upset and impatient with those and they might not do a, they might not be doing anything wrong at all. They might just be your children being children, your roommates being roommates, your partner being him or herself. Uh, but they irritate you because you're with them all the time and you don't have your ways to escape and cope. Putting noise canceling headphones on or some earbuds in that blocks that out for a time and after you've told them, hey, leave me alone, I'm doing this for myself so I can be patient and kind later on, is a great way to ground and feel a little bit more settled. Another suggestion is to limit your news intake. Um, there's not a ton happening now from hour to hour anymore. Uh, and we can probably predict what we're going to read anyways. And I question, is that really helpful for your mental health? Do you need to know that? Are you a member in our community making significant decisions based on the latest research? If you are, you already are doing your job and you're connected. But for the rest of us, uh, limiting our exposure to that, limiting our exposure to people that are anxious or toxic is also helpful. We're not saying, I'm not saying don't talk to those types of folks. Uh, but I'm saying limiting our exposure is wise if we're looking out for our mental health, that we aren't just engaged in diving in headfirst with fear mongering kind of behavior and getting lost in that process. Um, another suggestion is journaling, um, some, some form of like releasing and venting. Um, typically, guys aren't that great at journaling. Typically, women are more familiar and better at it, but everyone can benefit from it. You don't need to write poems. You don't need to have good drawing skills. This is just an exercise to get your thoughts out on paper so they're not in here. It does matter. It does make a difference to get it outside of your body. And getting it on paper, especially at night before bed, is a really good routine. I'll cover that in a little bit. Um, but to make sure stuff's not in here any more than it has to. This is a short-term storage place. The rest needs to be put out in, into more better long-term file cabinets so we can be present to make good decisions in the moment. Another topic that's uh, relevant right now is feeling isolated. Obviously, we're on shutdown. We're not seeing people. We're not laughing. We're not hanging out in lots of the same ways that we're used to. So I want to acknowledge that if you're feeling isolated, uh, there's nothing wrong with you. Uh, you didn't do anything to deserve this. I don't think your friends have deserted you or your, your family doesn't care about you. We're all in a shutdown mode, which affects us socially and affects us emotionally. So acknowledging that this is not you. This is a we thing and that you're doing your part uh, is, is one important step and not continue to feel more and more uh, isolated in an emotional way. Um, physically, we are isolated. So figuring out how can we be around some people, perhaps that, that is in a safe manner. So if we go to the park or we go on a hike or we go to the store, um, not looking at every person as the carrier of the plague who they're going to get us sick and we're going to die. Look at them as other humans that are trying to make it through this and see a chance to connect, keeping our distance, not coughing, sneezing, high-fiving one another, but a way to really share space and share life is possible, uh, especially if you have a job and a home environment that keeps you incredibly isolated. It's probably good to get out and have some human connection with precautions. Um, set up videos, hangout sessions, phone calls. Most of us are already doing that. Um, it feels great to like see people, laugh with people uh, because of just the isolation and the anxiety that comes with being in our homes. I encourage you to set up those hangout sessions with friends and family. Uh, in our state, at least in our community, there's the 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. howling session, which has been awesome for our family. Our kids love it every night. Uh, it's pretty powerful to sit back and listen to everyone around you. I don't know, depending on where you live and how close they are, but uh, it's pretty cool to participate in something that uh, brings us together, even though we're separated right now. So 8, 8 p.m., you walk outside and literally you just like howl and you'll hear other people howling. So um, another suggestion for this time is uh, positive self-talk. Like I am not alone. Uh, I'm not feeling I'm not rejected. I'm not missing out. I'm doing my part to be healthy and stay safe. 
and I'm going to reach out to so-and-so. I'm going to make a plan to text, to call, uh, to FaceTime with so-and-so because I want to, to be involved. Instead of judging how we feel and letting that define us, we be on the, we'll get on the proactive side of that and make it happen. Another topic that's been brought up and is always relevant in, in life and, uh, is self-care. Uh, this is an important time for us to be able to manage our mental health, our physical health, our emotional health, and our relationships in order to function the way we want to function. And it's compromised given our routines are compromised. So typical starting point is how's your sleep? Are you exercising? How's your diet? How are your relationships? Uh, are you practicing gratitude? Are you being engaged in creative activities? These are all really important tips right now. So prioritizing sleep, I'd, I'd like to start there. Uh, is making sure that you have a good routine, that you're winding down as you get closer to bed and not flooding your head with news and fear and what ifs, but it's a slow, gradual process that you're moving into your time for sleep. Uh, if you have a lot of thoughts bouncing around in your head, jot them down. Get them outside of your head. Do not shut your eyes and, and hope to just they're going to go away in the middle of the night. They usually come alive and create more of a, a distraction anyway. So dumping that onto paper without any scrutiny or without any like intense structure to it, get it out, start if it needs to be addressed the next day, uh, and leave it, leave it there. Uh, exercise and movement. We're not limited from walking, hiking, biking right now. Um, there are a lot of home, at-home workouts that have been posted. These are all great opportunities to get the blood flowing, get your heart rate up, uh, feel like you're accomplishing some things. It typically leads to better sleep. It typically leads to better eating, mental health, physical health. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for you to take charge and make some small or big changes right now. Um, diet goes the same way. What we eat becomes who we are. What we focus on, uh, whether it's the scale, whether it's how we look, whether it's how we feel, um, what we eat matters a ton. And so now that we're not eating out as much, maybe that's going to help you create some healthy habits. Uh, encourage you to shop wisely, bring stuff into your home that you want to eat, uh, you don't feel bad about, limit the stuff that makes you feel bad. Maybe that's you know scheduled for a Saturday or a Friday night and it's a little bit of a reward. Um, but not having those those goodies around uh, that when you're emotionally charged and you want to go self-care through emotional eating, which typically leads to regret, uh, don't even bring that in your home to start off with. So use this as an opportunity to be more disciplined at home. Um, same goes with drinking. It's uh, easier right now to drink more, manage stress. You're bored. It's available. I'm already home. Who knows the difference? Uh, it, it can obviously turn into a really bad habit and those that struggle with, struggle with drinking, uh, even more of a concern. So, uh, feel like, feel permission to set some limits and some boundaries around that so that you feel like you're in control of that part of your life. Uh, another self-care, uh, tip is gratitude. Um, there are, there are a ton of things to be grateful for right now always, but, uh, but certainly now in terms of, we do live in a place where most of us are safe. We do have healthcare systems that are working really hard. We have we do have people that care that are fighting for uh, vaccinations that are going to fix this. We have people that are fighting to keep people safe uh, in the community in our hospitals. Uh, most of us have clean water. Most of us have clothes, a roof over our heads, a waste waste system that works properly. Uh, there's a lot of things to be grateful for. Uh, and if we focus only on the fears and the what ifs, sometimes our heart begins to get a little tight and our mind gets a little worried and we forget to enjoy the things that we have like the springtime coming on and green grass and flowers popping up and birds are out. There are a lot of things to be grateful for that we can kind of focus on and calm that inner spirit versus flooding it with what if kind of emotions and, and news. Um, it's a great time for creativity, learning a new language, learning an instrument, um, fixing stuff in the yard, working in the garage. Uh, there are all kinds of things that we can be doing that are good for mind, body, and soul. Uh, we just have to shut off the phone. We have to shut off the TV and put ourselves into that creative space. But it's a wonderful time to come alive and to see other parts of our lives when we're focused on that. Um, I talked about this a little bit ago, but in terms of self-care, if we're at home and we have kids or we have roommates or partners that are on our nerves, uh, noise canceling headphones are always a great self-care skill or, or tool. Um, usually it's important to tell people, hey, just so you know, I have these on. 
I'm going to be listening to something for the next half hour or an hour. If it's not an emergency, please leave me alone. If you want, you can create a do not disturb sign. Um, and just to create that space when you don't have the space. We, we need that emotional uh, cave, in a sense, to be able to gather our thoughts and make sense of things. And when we feel like that's being violated, we typically get irritated and impatient with those around us. So self-care tips is carve out your space. Um, make time in your day for you to clear your head, whether that's a walk um, around or just inside your house, outside your house. Uh, I would encourage you to get outside. It's beautiful right now. Um, the weather looks like it's going to hold for a little bit longer uh, for another spring storm. But getting outside, getting your vitamin D is good for mind, body, and soul. Um, another topic that's been brought up is how to be helpful within your job and at home with limitations. So a lot of us have jobs that you know tip, temp, or, uh, typically put us into contact with other people. Right now, under state orders, um, we're supposed to limit that. Um, there are jobs that are considered essential. If you have an essential job that requires you to go into the homes or interact with people on a personal level, when it first acknowledge that that creates a lot of tension, that it's not you overreacting. Let's be honest that all of us understand that these are unprecedented times, that policies and procedure manuals and job descriptions aren't written for times like this, and yet we still have jobs to complete. And so my encouragement is creativity, collaboration, uh, and, and a lot of patience as we try to figure this out, try to figure out particular job responsibilities with limitations. So you have a right to care for yourself. You have a right to care for your family. And you have a responsibility in some ways in your job. Learning how to manage those in a productive way is going to take a lot of creativity and collaboration. So work with your manager, work with your supervisor, work with your teammates uh, in terms of being creative. Where someone has a strength, someone else might have a weakness that can meet. Someone has courage, someone has fear. Coming together and being a team most likely is going to be the best solution. Um, but not giving in to fear and just shutting down, that's where things start to break down and fall apart and create division in our teams and in our jobs. So fight through that anxiety, collaborate, voice your concerns, uh, but work hard at finding solutions. Um, another topic that's been brought up is just the, the need to disconnect. So we need to give ourselves permission to disconnect and shut down from work, from news sources and possibly from other people. And that can feel hard when our boundaries at home are different than they used to be. So one, one suggestion that I often make with a lot of clients is a transition ritual. Something that you can do that symbolizes, I'm done with work, now I'm transitioning to my home environment. So whether that's a five minute walk, you take a shower, you wash your face, change your clothes, do a meditation, Something that allows you to now transition mentally into another space and not let the, the cycle of news or responsibilities from the day follow you into your next thing. Another tip is setting intention with whatever you're about to do, whether that's going to work or coming home from work and entering into your home environment or transitioning in your home environment from work to home. But identify one to three things that, are the, that you want to focus on that night or that day. I want to be patient. I want to be uh, rested. I want to be kind. Uh, I want to be problem solving. I want to be a good teammate. I want to be available emotionally. Those are all potential in intentions that we can set that give our minds something to focus on versus pretending to shut down, uh, but then be unavailable to, to the things or the people that need us. So one important way to disconnect is shutting things down and creating those transitions. But also, I mentioned earlier, limiting your exposure to toxic news or just volatile news and volatile people. Um, you don't have to cut people or news totally out, but limiting your exposure is good for yourself and good for your overall mental health. Uh, another topic that's important to discuss is what it looks like to be hopeful in a time that uh, feels hopeless. And I would start by expressing my belief and that is hope is a belief system and a mindset more so than it is a fact based on circumstances. Um, it is a, a choice that we make to look at the world, look at ourselves, look at others in a certain way. So instead of me saying, you know, this sucks, I'm screwed, we're screwed because we're on lockdown and this virus is spreading, I choose to say, we will figure this out, we are going to bond together 
and, and figure out a solution. And we're going to be healthy and helpful in the process despite tragedies and uh, uncertainties. So it's not to deny the exposure to those things. It's to rise above that and say, yes, but I will be. I, don't, I can't guarantee what's going to happen around me, but I can commit to being the person I want to be. I want to be loving, faithful, kind, patient, strong, assertive, collaborative. Those are things I have control over regardless of what the virus does and regardless of what others do around me. So my encouragement to you is that you choose to be the person that you want to be in this situation and not let the circumstances or the news or the feelings of others dictate who you are and how you behave. I want to close with acknowledging that we all need help during a time like this. And help looks different for all of us. Some it's just being able to talk to someone else. Some of us, it's we care for ourselves and we journal and we meditate. Uh, others, it's talking to our mentors, our therapists, reaching out for counseling. Uh, everyone's doing teletherapy, so you can do it from the comfort of your home um, in a trusting, easy format. Um, but we just need to get stuff out a lot of the time and stuffing it in and being tough and figuring this out on your own is not wise and typically isn't healthy. It's not weak to talk about emotions. It's not weak to share things with others. It's vulnerable and that creates this uneasy feeling more so for guys than for girls. But across the board, it's not easy to be vulnerable and humble with our stuff, but it's healthy. So choose people that you trust, choose people you respect and reach out and share if you feel like there's any kind of like rise in temperature inside. So I use a scale of one to 10 often with clients and 10 is like volcano explosion, uh, steam's coming out your ears, you've just lost it. Six is your number that you really wanna be conscious of. Any six or higher is kind of like, all right, now you're in a danger zone. You need to go do some releasing, whether that's exercise, um, sharing with someone, some creative outlet, like some form of releasing to get that number down. Um, numbers are a good objective way to gauge where we're at. So if you can look to keep that number below a six with your activities, you're going to be in good shape. Obviously, you'd like to get to zero as often as you can. So you, just build, you build your whole day around that. But when you get up to seven or eight, you've got to reach out for help. You cannot bottle that up and expect to be healthy and not hurt those around you. So Hopefully you feel encouraged to, to take that self-care seriously and be self-aware enough to know when you're in a good place versus a hurting place. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me. I want to encourage all of you, be hopeful, uh, practice good health uh, in your routines, but don't isolate socially. We need to connect. We need to share. We need to be available for one another. So be the person that you want to be and don't let the circumstances around you dictate how you feel and who you are.